What if I told you one man's march could change the course of a war? That man was William Tecumseh Sherman. Born in 1820, Sherman grew up with a fierce determination that would later define his military career. His life was a tapestry of events, from his graduation from West Point to his early service in the Second Seminole War and the Mexican-American War. Sherman was a bit of an enigma. His contemporaries often found him difficult to understand. Some admired his strategic brilliance, others criticized his ruthless tactics, yet all agreed that he was a force to be reckoned with. As the Civil War loomed on the horizon, Sherman, a seasoned soldier, found himself in a position of significant influence. Despite his controversial reputation, Sherman's role in the war was undeniable. His strategies and tactics, though hotly debated, were instrumental in shaping the course of the conflict. Sherman, a man of complex character, was about to undertake a campaign that would etch his name into the annals of history. November 1864, Sherman and his men began their march from Atlanta to Savannah, a distance of about 300 miles. It was a journey that would live on in the annals of American history, not just for its military significance, but for the psychological warfare it represented. Sherman's strategy was as clear as it was ruthless. He aimed to paralyze the Confederacy's ability to wage war by destroying their infrastructure and breaking their spirit. His army was designed to be self-sustainable, living off the land, reducing the need for supply lines that could be vulnerable to attack. Sherman's men employed a scorched earth policy, leaving a path of destruction in their wake. They tore up railroads, decimated crops, burned down buildings, and slaughtered livestock. The goal was not merely to defeat the Confederate army, but to shatter the Southern will to fight. The march was not merely a military campaign, it was psychological warfare. This was Sherman's march to the sea, a defining moment in the American Civil War. As Sherman's forces advanced, they left a trail of devastation in their wake. The march, which began in Atlanta and ended in Savannah, spanned over 300 miles and was as much a psychological weapon as it was a physical one. This was not merely a march, it was a ruthless campaign of destruction. Sherman's men targeted not just military outposts but civilian property as well. They toppled telegraph poles, tore up railway tracks and burned crops in the field. They torched warehouses, factories, and plantations, reducing them to ashes. The aim was to shatter the morale of the South, to make the war so unbearable that they would have no choice but to surrender. And the impact was indeed profound. The sight of their homes and livelihoods reduced to rubble was a blow from which many Southerners never fully recovered. They watched helplessly as Sherman's men took what they wanted and set fire to the rest. It was a campaign designed to break the spirit of the South, and in many ways, it succeeded. Ultimately, Sherman's march culminated in the capture of Savannah, just before Christmas in 1864. The city was presented to President Lincoln as a Christmas gift, a significant victory that signaled the beginning of the end for the Confederacy. The South was left ravaged and demoralized, the war effort crippled. Sherman's march to the sea was a turning point in the Civil War. This was no ordinary march. It was a strategic military campaign that significantly contributed to the Union's victory. A 60-mile-wide swath of devastation from Atlanta to Savannah, Georgia, left the Confederacy reeling. The march effectively crippled the Confederates' ability to sustain their war efforts. But the march was more than just a military tactic. It was a psychological warfare. It was designed to crush the Southern will to fight. The devastation left in its wake, the burning of crops and homes, the destruction of the South's infrastructure was a clear message to the Confederates. Resistance is futile. However, such tactics were not without controversy. Sherman's scorched earth policy sparked debates over the ethics of war. Critics argued that the march was unnecessarily brutal, targeting civilians and their property, a violation of the accepted rules of war. Yet for others, Sherman was a military genius, his approach a necessary evil to bring a swift end to the bloody conflict. His legacy thus is a complex one, tinged with both admiration and condemnation. Sherman's march, though brutal, brought the harsh realities of war to the doorstep of the Confederacy, hastening the end of the Civil War. It was a symbol of the Union's resolve and a testament to the strategic brilliance of Sherman. Sherman's march, a destructive force of warfare, forever changed the course of American history.